The President of the Republic, Abdelmajid Taboon, received on Monday here in Algiers U.S. Army General Stephen Townsend, Commander U.S. Africa Command Africam, who is on a working visit to Algeria in the company of an important delegation. This encounter allowed the examination of the means of promoting cooperation relations in various fields linked to the activity of AFRICOM and to review the developments recorded in the region, in particular security in the Sahel and the means of strengthening the capacities of countries in the region, particularly in the fight against terrorism. The meeting took place in the presence of the Lieutenant General, Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, Saeed Chengriha, and the Director of the Cabinet and the Presidency of the Republic, Abdelaziz Khalaf. I'm here in Algeria for the second time, and in this visit, I met with the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboon, as well as with the Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, Lieutenant General Saeed Chengriha. We discussed the security situation in the region and the strong bilateral partnership between the U.S. and the Algerian government. I'm honored to be here. The U.S. hopes to continue building on our strong bilateral relations even further in the future. Lieutenant General Saeed Chengir Hachif of Staff of the National People's Army AMP received an audience Monday at the headquarters of the AMP General Staff Army General Stephen G. Thousand, Commander of Africa. After the welcoming ceremony and the salute of the national emblem, the two parties discussed during this meeting, in which took part the Secretary General of the Ministry of National Defense, the commanders of the forces and the National Gendarmerie, the heads of departments and central directors of the Ministry of National Defense, and the AMP staff as well as the delegation. The willingness of the two armies to consolidate bilateral relations and exchange their views on issues of common interest. This visit reflects AFRICOM's interest in the security issues that concern the sub-region and the challenges that arise from them, particularly with regard to stability and sustainable development. Furthermore, Lieutenant General Saeed Chengri has seized this opportunity to express his gratitude to the American side for the medical aid provided for the AMP in a particular particular context characterized by the COVID-19 health crisis. At the end of the meeting, Army General Stephen G. Townsend signed the Golden Book of the National People's Army Staff. Algeria, through its head of diplomacy, Ramdan Amamra, reaffirmed Monday in New York its support for the inalienable right of the Sahari people to self-determination, calling for the organization of a free and fair referendum in occupied Western Sahara. Algeria expressed on Monday its deep concern over the lack of prospects for a just and final solution to the Palestinian question. In an address, Ramdan Amamra said, the extraordinary and dangerous context that the international community is experiencing today in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic must not make us forget the political and security crisis. The hotbeds of tension and the development challenges facing many regions of the world, particularly in the Middle East and Africa. Algeria, a pivotal country that works for peace and cooperation, is following with great interest the recent developments in several brotherly countries and reiterates its constant position in favor of promoting peaceful and political solutions to these conflicts and crisis. Far from any form of foreign interference, the validity and importance of which are constantly confirmed on the ground. In this spirit, my country has been engaged in numerous efforts at the regional and international levels to address the root causes of these crises and conflicts and to restore stability by defending the values of dialogue, negotiation and national reconciliation. Algeria will continue to defend the just causes of people struggling to recover their fundamental rights, including their inalienable right to self-determination, particularly in Palestine and Western Sahara. In this context, Algeria expresses its deep concern on the lack of prospect for a just and definitive solution to the Palestinian question and condemns the persistence of the repressive practices of the Zionist occupation against the Palestinian people and its total denial of the peace process and of the relevant resolutions of the United Nations and the International Court of Justice. Algeria renews its appeal to the international community and more particularly to the Security Council to assume its historical and legal responsibilities and to force the occupying power to put an end to its occupation of the Palestinian territories and to allow the Palestinian people to establish an independent state with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital. Algeria also reiterates its commitment to the Arab Peace Initiative aimed at enshrining the two-state solution and liberating all 
occupied Arab territories, including the Syrian Golan. With the same determination, Algeria reaffirms its support for the right of the Sahrawi people to self-determination. The organization of a free and fair referendum to enable this valiant people to determine their destiny and political future cannot remain forever hostage to the intransigence of an occupying state that has repeatedly failed to meet its international obligations. Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad Minister Ramtala Mamra met with members of the Algerian community established in New York, with whom he had an interactive debate aiming at strengthening the links and cooperation between the members of the diaspora and the diplomatic missions. On this occasion, the head of the Algerian diplomacy conveyed the greetings of the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Aboun, to the children of the diaspora in the United States and his commitment to involve them and consolidate the bridges linking them to their homeland. 155 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, 109 healings and 9 new deaths were recorded during the last 24 hours in Algeria, as was announced on Monday by the Health Ministry. During a training day for the benefit of executives from several sectors under the theme of European solidarity response to COVID-19 in Algeria, the Health Minister Abdurrahman bin Bouzid stated that a coordinated action by the whole government is needed to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. He furthermore specified that the Health Ministry's cooperation program with the European delegation under the aegis of the United Nations Development Program aims to strengthen the know-how and skills of executives of various ministerial bodies involved in the fight against the COVID-19 alongside the health sector. Two framework agreements were signed on Monday in Algiers between four companies in the agriculture and energy sectors in the presence of Agriculture and Rural Development Minister Abdel Hamid Hamdani and Energy Minister Mohamed Arqab aiming to meet the urgent needs of farmers. These agreements were concluded between the Algerian Interprofessional Cereals Office, OAIS, and the Fertilizers and Final Sanitary Products Industrial Group, ASMEDAL. And a second agreement was also signed between the Agro-Logistics Industrial Group, AgroLodge, and Agri-Food Activity, which is a branch of the Sonatrack Group. The 16th International Exhibition of Water Equipment, Technologies and Services, Pelutac, opened its doors on Monday with the presence of Water Resources Minister at the International Conference Center in Algiers. 6,000 professional visitors were present to discover the diversified offers of equipment, technology and services presented by nearly 100 exhibitors at the fair. The event offered a program of activities, conferences and debates focusing on digitization and the water sector, waste water treatment, desalination and demineralization of water. An award ceremony was also held for the three laureates of the third edition of the National Competition of the Best Research Project in the Water Sector, organized by the Integrated Water Resources Management Agency and the National Agency for the Promotion of Research Results and Technological Development. It is worth mentioning that the Polutec will close its doors on September 30th. Many desalination station projects are in the study phase, while others have been launched, such as that of the municipalities of Burj Al Kifan, El Marsa in Algiers, or that of Corso in the province of Bumardas. Unfortunately, hundreds of families live here following the earthquake, and this is all that remains of the cottages which shelter them. 30,000 cubic meters of debris were evacuated in anticipation in order to reconstruct them. The station of Kursu in the province of Bumardas, with its capacity of 80,000 cubic meter per day, is one of the four stations planned in the government's emergency program. Lobato Kasi desalination station with the capacity of 1,000 cubic meter per day will be delivered in the next five months. On the other hand, the one in Fuka, with its capacity of 300,000 cubic meter per day, will be launched shortly. In addition to stations in the west and the center are in the government's agenda in the short term. The objective is to achieve more than 50% of the contribution to the supply of drinking water 
from the desalination of seawater by 2025. The Correctional Chamber of Tipaza Court decided on Monday to postpone to next October 11th the appeal trial of Karim Tabu, sentenced at first instance to a one-year suspended sentence for undermining the morale of the army. Units of the Sahrawi People's Liberation Army carried out new attacks against the Moroccan Occupation Army in the sector of Awasard, according to a communique released by the Sahrawi Defense Ministry. Five Palestinians were killed in clashes with the Zionist army in the West Bank due to the ongoing attacks since Sunday targeting the Hamas movement. In Yemen, at least 50 loyalist forces have been killed over the past 48 hours in the Marie province. Moving on to Germany, a pole of stability under the Merkel era has fallen into an unusual political confusion with two candidates for a chancellor's chair following legislative elections which could deprive it of international visibility for many months. In Qatar, nine young Afghans who were doing robotics in Kabul registered for the international robotics competition. These young women, who work in the robotics laboratory in one of the American universities located in Qatar, are trying to imagine a better future in the Middle East. CRS Cement is none other than the latest product to expand the already extensive range of the company Saura Cement of Bashar province. Also called sulfate-resistant cement, this product has several advantages, especially in view of its resistance to the degrees of nature and to soil salinity. This type of cement is in great demand in this region of the country. It will be of great help to producing companies operating in the southwest region of the country as well as in neighboring countries. We have succeeded in achieving our objectives, namely product quality and quantity. We even recorded a surplus in production which will allow us to supply other regions of the country. CRS cement should soon be exported to neighboring countries such as Mali and Niger, to which other types of cement are exported. Saura Company initially started producing CPG cement in November, and then after consultations we decided to take a new policy, which is to create this new product, CRS cement. The production operation started about 15 days, while the marketing of the product commenced 10 days ago. This new cement has been well welcomed by entrepreneurs and our partners. Entered into effective production in 2020, the cement plant, the first of its kind in Bashar province, has an annual production capacity of 1 million tons of cement. <laughs>